to Thought for the Day. Our readings are Exodus chapters 3 and 4, Psalms 56 and 57, and Romans chapter 9. Our thought is that my name might be proclaimed. Our readings today in Exodus and Romans tie in together in their reference to the exaltation of Moses, now ready in God's sight to serve him after 40 years of preparation in the land of Midian. Moses is now a meek and humble man, as we re- as recorded in Numbers 12 and verse 3, and God can now use him. Paul's points in our Romans chapter 9 are illuminating. First he states how God says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. Verses 15 and 16. In our Exodus reading yesterday, we saw how God could not use Moses' own will and exertion. In chapter 2 and verses 11 to 15, Paul then drives home the lesson that one cannot deserve, that is, earn God's blessing by their own efforts. All God's blessings are an expression of God's mercy. This is parallel to talking about God's grace. Therefore, it is really saddening today when so many talk and write glibly about grace as though it is an ever-flowing factor that they can be certain about, regardless of how they behave. Paul next makes the point that Scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I have raised you up, that I might show my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Verse 17. This is not the proclamation of God's actual name as an intellectual understanding, but of God's reputation that was about to be established by what he did. We will read of this in the next few days. The dramatic deliverance from Egypt of the descendants of Jacob. In relation to this Look carefully at our reading in Exodus chapter 3, where God's name is given as, I will be what I will be, in verse 14, as shown in the ESV footnote. Primarily, this means God will make his name, that is, his reputation by what is about to happen. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations, verse 15. Their deliverance from Egypt became a memorial which all generations would look back to as a foundation for their confidence in God. Thus, when we come to read Psalm 135 and its praises to the Lord, we will see the full significance in verses 8 to 13 of the Lord's name and renown. It is fully expressed in Isaiah 63 verses 11 to 14 how how you, God, led your people to make for yourself a glorious name. Daniel makes the same point in his impassioned prayer in Daniel 9 and verse 15. In the same way, we look back to the sacrifice and resurrection of our Saviour and how God made for himself the name of Father. We are privileged to call God Father. But how many hallow that name when they say the Lord's Prayer? Do we? Just as vital is to ask, how many are striving to make a name for themselves which Christ will remember when the time comes for him to confess what those in his service have achieved according to the talents given to them? Think about what Jesus says in Revelation 3 and verse 5. The one who conquers him or herself I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Our name that Christ will confess will be achieved in many different ways. For example, to quote James 1 verse 27, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. That truly is true religion. Well, we pray that our thought for the day will have helped you on your